It's going to open up a window. There we go. So when you first log in, you get this sort of window that has the, the, the greatest and latest uh, sort of thing. You can see sort of like the, the people, what people have done. But when you open a new window, you just go file new. And here's the important thing. Uh, you want to have whatever resolution you, have, you want for the screen. Well, typically a 1080 resolution is probably the best one. So let's try that. And the difference between 30 and 24 frames per second, I'll explain later, but let's go for 30 because it makes a smaller file. The length of your video, you can always change it afterwards, but we're going to put it at 15 minutes and then that way you can always trim it. All the other settings, you can kind of like, don't worry too much about it. The sound and everything else doesn't matter. So here we go. Now it's opening a new project. So here it is. Now, right now there's nothing in it. Just to give you a quick peek at the interface. Uh, and this is for most movie or video editors, mostly the same. You have a, a, a screen where you get your preview. Here, this is the, the actual, what, what's actually shown on the, on, the, uh, on the main screen. At the bottom, you have a timeline. Over here, you have whatever media you want to add to it. Um, so let's just say that I want to add some media. So I'm going to import it. So I'm going to go to my folder. Here's a video that I'm going to import. Uh, I have some sample ones here. So for example, let's get this guy. And it goes in there. Uh, underneath, under here, there's nothing yet. That's okay. Let's import another one. Let's import this black and white footage. Perfect. Now, you can also, you don't have to import just video clips. You can also import images. So if you're going to do a presentation, you can import some sort of graphic. So let's look at it here. You know, here's some graphics that I want to use in my presentation. You know, I, I created everything, Photoshop and Illustrator and downloaded it. So here's a whole bunch of stuff. So here's all the media that I have. I can also organize it so that it organizes either as, you know, videos or images. I haven't done anything yet. I'm going to add it to the canvas essentially. So here we go. So let's start by, this is a 25 minutes or a four minute segment. Uh, well, I don't really need the four minutes. I just want to show this clip. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the, the, the starting point and the end point. So here's my starting point right there. Here's my end point. Perfect. So now I'm actually, I can either drag it in or I can just say, put it in. There it is. So there's my clip. Let's do the same for this one, but this one, I'm just going to drag it in straight ahead. The trick to video editing is this, is that you have multiple tracks. Um, so for instance, when you look at the video here, you can see how it plays on one side, but then it switches. And here, the second one, because it was shot at a different uh, uh, screen resolution, it's a little smaller. So let's fix that. Let's make it bigger. So one way to do it is to you drag the corners and you just drag it to make it fit the square or what you can do is that if you hit the right key and go transform and say fit to frame, it fits whatever frame you have. Now, the, this clip may be a little bit too long, longer than we want to. So let's cut it. So I say, let's say that we want to start to show from here to this point. Here, what we're going to use is called the slice tool. So by going from there and then picking another slice point over here, we cut it. So we're going to get rid of this part and we're going to get rid of this part. So that's all we have. So now you have a video clip that basically starts here and then it transitions to this kind of image. Well, let's add uh, a graphic now. So here we go. So here's a graphic and we're going to add it to the timeline. The nice thing about graphics is that they can be as long as you want to without impacting the, the, the length of your clip. You notice here how this area 
uh, essentially, this is the length of my clip, so I need to drag it, or what I can do is say, set to contents, and then it's it's as long as whatever clip that is. So this clip, right now, it's four minutes or five minutes. There we go. You notice how it doesn't fit again? So let's make it fit the frame. There we go. So now we have a, a little presentation here. We go from a video to another video to a, a graphic, okay? Um, now this graphic has no sound. So as part of the in Haiku, I've added a, something called a couple of links. One of them is called Audacity. So Audacity is a free voice recorder. You can you can download it and use it. It's great for doing you know editing your clips. But a quick and dirty way of doing this is just to use any voice recorder. So if you Google voice recorder, here's for example, here's one. And I'm gonna start to record my voice, and there it is. So you can see kind of has a little bit of a pattern. And here's my presentation. I'm gonna talk a lot about this stuff aside. The key of making good voice recording is take a pause. So I'm going to stop talking. Now I can actually start talking again. You see that big gap there? That's going to help you when you do the editing because you'll know when the next topic is. So whenever you talk about something, stop and talk again. And that way you can actually, in one clip, you can record the whole thing. So let's stop it. We're going to save it. So let's see, I think it already saved. Let's copy it to our folder where we have all our stuff. I'm gonna paste it over here. So now if we go back to uh, Hit Film Express, we can import that voice recording. There it is. And you see, here's my clip. So I can actually drag it here and if I zoom in, there's a zoom in button on the bottom here that lets you zoom in and out. Uh, the pan button lets you pan. And I can see, for example, that my whatever I speak, whatever I spoke, uh, it's only this long. So I can't really stretch that image any longer. So let's make it so that it matches. Okay, so here we go. Perfect. So you see now I have a I have a piece of text or I have a graphic, and I have underneath I'm gonna let it play. It has a voiceover. Now, notice how the voiceover over here in the in the levels they're really high. So let's just uh, turn those down to to change the volume. Of the recording, there's a little control here that lets you change the peak levels, what's called the peak levels. So let's see what happens now. So you see, by changing that, it actually allows me to turn off the volume higher or lower, uh, depending on. I don't want to go to the red zone because then it's over, you know, it's, it's, it's I'm yelling into the microphone. But that's how you make a, a text graphic. Let's do a couple of other things. Uh, let's say that you wanted to put an overlay. Let's say that you wanted to add over here, you wanted to add some text to this graphic. So for that, what we need to do is what's called the composite. So let's look over here. In this media, you make what's called the composite shot and the, the, the interface is gonna change really quickly. So here we go. So we're gonna make a, a title text. So now we're in the composite mode. So over here, for instance, I can add a, make a little text and say, uh, uh, video, or I can put a, something like a production of Clay Pot 1904. To change the text, it's a little bit counterintuitive, but, but if you look at the bottom here, here's the text tool. And I can actually change, you know, the, the size of this. I can change things like, you know, the, the font. I can pick a different font. 
all the usual trappings of like uh, what we do in when you do you know editing in Photoshop or Illustrator. So here's my text. I can also you know put it on the center if I want to add the there's the center. There we go. Now what happened here is that I'm in a, this is a composite shot. So I'm, I, I moved away from the editor, which is over here. In the editor, there's nothing in it. My composite shot is sort of uh, over here and it's called composite shot. So I need to drop it in. Now I'm gonna drop it in on top of it, which means that I'm gonna lay it off, lay it on a new track. Let's go back to here. I'm just gonna drag it and put it over here. So what's happening is that there's my composite shot and I can actually put it over here and also shrink it. There it is. Perfect. So now when I play my video, this composite shot, maybe this video needs to be shortened probably. Here we go, almost there. There, so there's, now it's a little hard to read. So maybe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another composite shot, but this time it's gonna be called the plane. And the plane is just like a box, essentially. Let's make it a, yeah, let's keep it black. That's fine. Um, and we only need it to be, that's fine. There we go. We don't want to add it here. We're going to make a new track. There we go. We're going to put it like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to swap. We're going to put the plane on the bottom and this one over here. So you see the plane now makes it all black. But if we change the size of this, we can make it so the plane gives me a a little bit of a space. There we go. So just like in Illustrator and Photoshop, I can make these things appear and disappear, or basically use the layers, in this case, what's called the tracks, to create the different effects. So that way, when I go over here and go play, uh, let's speed it up. There we go. And this thing appears, and it says production of clay pots, blah, 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 you know. It's up to you. You do whatever you need to do, but that's how you create uh, these these effects. Um, let's talk a little bit about transitions. That's a, a you don't need transitions to do a good video, but it helps sometimes to transition from one topic to another. Um, let's have a look here. So here's my videos. Now I want to make a transition. Now transitions are under what's called effects. So under here. You see the all the transitions now. Let's look for uh, where we go. Transitions video. So there are some pretty typical transitions. Let's try just a wipe transition. Uh, here's a linear wipe. So what you do is you grab that and you kind of clip it right there. And so what's going to happen is that when it moves, the timeline moves from one video to the other, there's going to be a wipe like that. Now, you see how it didn't quite match. So maybe we need to tweak it a little bit. Let's make this video shorter and let's zoom in. And we'll put the linear wipe so that it A little bit longer, well, actually a little bit faster. Let's try it again. There. So depending on how long or how short you make it, the the, the transition will kind of go like that into that. The way to the trick to do a, a linear wipe like this would be to uh, let's add a new track. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that this thing is on top of it, on the other, others, on the on top of the other. Uh, just make sure that I'm not overriding over stuff. There we go. So if we do it like this, 
So you see now it's kind of like they're they're overlaid on top of each other. So then when we do the transition, it should work. Uh, except that we need to add the we need to go the other way around. We need to kind of go like this and like this. So let's see if that works. Yeah, so there we go. So that it's a matter of like uh, lining them up so that they, they swatch. Now, you don't, you don't have to use that transition. You can use something else like uh, the, the, the less fancy you get with transition, the better. So, for example, uh, typically they dissolve. Uh, um, where's the ones that I. Let's try to dissolve, see what happens with that one. Yeah, that's a more smooth transition, so it's a little bit better. Um, up to you. You know, you don't, you don't, you can use the transitions. You don't have to use the transitions. It's, it's really not required, but it's a, it's how you kind of uh, uh, make up some interesting changes. Some other stuff about the um, text, for instance. Let's say that we put our text over here. So here we go. We're going to trim this a little bit, move it over here. OK, um, again, other things that you can do too. Let's say that you wanted to, and this is more about uh, properties of the text. So if we want to media, uh, I need to select only one at a time. So here we go. Controls. That's what I'm looking for. Now, you notice how the text here, it, it just simply appears. So there's a couple of things you can do with text uh, or with any object, actually, with any clip. Let's say that you wanted to add, well, actually, let's add another media clip. Let's add uh, another image. This time, we're going to add this guy over here. I'm going to put it right there. But we're going to make it so that it doesn't take the whole frame. Come on. It's right here on the corner. So it's a picture within a picture. And this doesn't have to be a video. It can just be a photograph or an image, whatever you want it to be. But let's say that you wanted to make it appear slowly rather than just simply plop into place. So for that, under the control panels, there's this thing called uh, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. So it's what's called a keyframe, essentially. And this is done in video and animation. But here we go. So let's say that we want to change the opacity. So we're going to just click opacity. And automatically, this thing called the keyframe appears. And then we're going to go over here at the beginning and we're going to change the opacity from 100% to nothing. Let's go maybe over here. So we're going to flip the opacity. You see how it moves? So now we have this change from 100% to nothing. That means that when I do the transition, this clip will slowly appear on the scene. And then if I want to make it disappear, I just need to insert another keyframe. Followed by a second keyframe. And then change the opacity to nothing. Um, you can watch a lot more about how the opacity works and how these keyframes work, but essentially uh, this is, again, more advanced stuff that you, you may or may not want to try, but 
it helps you kind of create a story by showing images, laying them on top, and then you know it disappears. Let's uh, move on to the final stage. So now that we have a video that we have, like now we, we have a video, everything's working fine, let's export it. So we're gonna export it so that we can actually create a movie that we like. Uh, so over here, where is it? It's at the bottom. I think we need to go. That's the settings. Well, first of all, let's save it. Um, one thing to remember about uh, whenever you make a project, just like in Illustrator, just like in uh, SolidWorks, all the files are linked. They're not saved with a with a project. So if you move this folder or if you move this project, this project is really small. If you look at it here, this project is only a thousand kilobytes, but it's got like movies and clips and stuff that that's more than 33 megabytes. You know, really big stuff. If you don't move the entire project, it won't work. Like when you try to open it again. So make sure that. Whenever you create these video files, everything is in the same spot. Okay, but here we go. We're gonna export this. Um, here's the export manager. So it already has some preset. Let's uh, open this up uh, to the maximum. Here's the settings though, presets. So you can actually preset it to certain uh, standards. So for example, you can go to uh, uh, YouTube or to Facebook or to HD. Usually, you know, something like this would work fine if you just go Facebook, and say start exporting. So just make sure that you save it to the right location in your computer. Like uh, if it says here, uh, you know, this is the location it's gonna go to. So right now it's right there. It's a huge file, but let's see if we can uh, open it up. That's not the one. Oh, sorry. I need to, this is the, uh, let's clear the task and add the task to the list. That's the problem. So let's go back here. What I need to do, is first of all, I need to set the contents to this. I need to select all of it. I believe. For some reason, I'm missing one key button that I can't quite find. Something about my. Add to export. That's what I would need to do. Let's see. So now if I open up my export. There, it is doing it. it it's kind of like it's, it's. It takes a while. This is the problem about these video files: is that you know it always. It's a bit of a waiting game to get the exporting to happen. But there it is. It's it's doing the exporting right now. Uh, it's about that twenty five percent. So um, just make sure that whenever you do the export, uh, 
uh, try to use some settings that are not super high. Not You don't need to do HD. You don't need to do super high uh, video editing. You just need to have enough resolution to show it on the web. So don't always, bigger is not always better. But you can see here now it's, it's doing its exporting thing. And then when it's finished, it'll be uh, in whatever fo folder I have it in. So that's it. That's the... That's essentially the basics of how to do some video editing. I think next week I'll show you a couple of other things, but uh, uh, you can try it out, see how it works. If you have any more questions, uh, you can just uh, email me and, and I'll see if I can help you.